So, we have the story of God creating the earth, from the very beginning of Genesis chapter 1, in our Bibles, right? And we were told, it was Moses that wrote the book of Genesis. But Moses only came into the Bible in Exodus chapter 2. So, some things need to be explained. How Moses was able to describe the story of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the floods of Noah, and all the other engaging stories of the first books of the Bible. Now, if Moses' personal eyewitness account may have served as the basis for Exodus through Deuteronomy. What about Genesis, though? About 3,000 years prior to Moses' birth, the events described at the end of the book of Genesis took place. Furthermore, God and possibly his heavenly troop were the only ones there when the earth and heavens were formed. So how could Moses write about the beginning of creation and everything that happened in the rest of Genesis? He had to rely on sources, of course. Which sources were these? Well, it's an exact revelation straight from God. One theory about this subject is that God may have directly revealed to Moses the details of what transpired at the beginning. This would align with how God has shown himself in other passages of the Bible. For instance, God told the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah what was to come. As he told others what would happen in the future, it is therefore very conceivable that he also told Moses what had transpired in the past. Or it might be from records preserved since the dawn of time. It's also possible that documentation of God's interactions with humans was preserved from the start. The first-hand testimonies we have are supported by the human touch with which these events are reported, such as Abraham's plea for Sodom and his offering of Isaac. Abraham is known to have originated in a nation where writing and reading were widespread. It's plausible that he gathered any prior records and brought them along. Additionally, the Bible states that Abraham gave Isaac everything he owned, Genesis 25 verse 5. Records from earlier periods might have been in his possession. But there is at least one known tradition. It is known that at least one of the Josephine customs was preserved until the time of Moses. Genesis 50 verse 25 records that Joseph made his brothers swear they would transport his bones from Egypt to the promised land. Joseph's body was kept in a preserved state until Moses' time, when his request was approved. We are informed that his desires were fulfilled. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry my bones from here with you. Exodus 13 verse 19 The necropolis in Shechem, after being transported to the promised land, his bones were interred in Shechem. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem, in the plot of ground that Jacob had bought from the sons of Hammer the father of Shechem for one hundred pieces of silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph, Joshua 24 verse 32. For centuries passed between the times Joseph had his brothers swear to bury his bones in the promised land and the actual transport of those remains there. As a result, we are aware of at least one Genesis custom that was preserved until hundreds of years after Moses' time. And Joseph and Moses could get there easily. The events that occurred during the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are covered in more than three quarters of Genesis, chapters 12 to 50. Joseph certainly knew everything that happened throughout their lives, including anything that was documented in writing. If there were written records of his ancestors, he would have had little trouble gathering and preserving them thanks to his strong position in Egypt. There is also the discoveries of coffins. Furthermore, inscriptions and passages from the Egyptian Book of the Dead have been found on coffins dating back before Joseph's time. It is not too hard to conceive that the grave of Joseph, the man whom God used to deliver Israel, would likewise contain records of the traditions of his ancestors if the coffins of Egyptian priests and rulers had inscriptions from Egyptian holy texts, the ways Moses acquired the records. This illustrates how Moses could have gotten hold of these documents. Thus, when compiling the book of Genesis, Moses might have consulted the documents kept in Joseph's coffin would have obtainable. 
Moses would also have had access to any additional written records from past eras that would have found their way down to Egypt because he was reared as the son of Pharaoh's daughter and educated in Pharaoh's court. The events will be extracted precisely. But the accuracy of what was recorded is the key concern. According to the biblical concept of inspiration, the authors were inspired by God to accurately report what had happened. It does not imply that the author's thinking was like a blank slate that the Holy Spirit wrote on. Rather, it only supports the final product's accuracy. Using previously published written materials is acceptable. It would not at all conflict with the divine inspiration of scripture if Moses had used earlier materials. The main issue is that we are unsure of Moses' source of information regarding the events described in Genesis. Even though the events of Genesis came to an end three centuries prior to Moses' birth, there are compelling arguments to suggest that he penned, or at least assembled, the first book of the Bible. Furthermore, Moses had two options for writing about creation without physically being there. He could have used pre-existing records or received direct revelation from God. Whatever the situation, the end product was God's inspired, imperfect word. Moses and the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Deuteronomy, have been the target of one of the most significant attacks on the Bible in the last 300 years. Such criticisms of these fundamental texts of the rest of the Bible originate from both professed Christians and non-Christians. The belief that Moses did not write the Pentateuch, also known as the Law or Torah has been perpetuated by seminary courses, theology books, Pentateuch introductions and Bibles, and the mainstream media. Rather, it is asserted that throughout several centuries, at least four distinct authors or groups of authors authored various parts of these works, and then over many years, one or more redactors, editors integrated and interwoven everything into its current form. In the introduction to the Pentateuch, for instance, one translation of the Bible that we looked at stated the following. The book is a sophisticated composition that cannot be assigned to a single original author yet having a cohesive strategy and goal. There are a number of sources, or literary traditions, that the final redactor clearly drew from when writing his work. These are the sources that represent ancient oral traditions, including the Yahwist, J, Elohist, E, and Priestly, P. According to an alternative Bible translation's introduction to the Old Testament, the Jade document was written in the southern kingdom of Judah considerably later than Moses, while the Ede document was written in the northern kingdom of Israel. Let's assess the justifications offered for this theory. The authors designated by the letters J, E, D, and P are attributed to different sections of the Pentateuch. It is hence known as the Documentary Hypothesis also known as the JEDP model. Numerous Jewish and theologically liberal Christian scholars developed this concept between the late 17th and late 19th centuries, and various suggestions regarding who wrote what and when have been made. However, by the end of the 1800s, liberal intellectuals had come to a consensus. The symbols represent J documents are the passages, verses, or sometimes even portions of verses authored by one or more authors who favored referring to God by his Hebrew name, Yahweh, Jehovah. It has been suggested that the author wrote between 900 and 850 BC. Ye papers are those that refer to God as Elohim and are said to have been composed between 750 and 700 BC. D is for Deuteronomy the majority of which was composed around the period of King Josiah's 621 BC reforms, possibly by a different author or group of authors. P, which stands for priest, designates the writings in Leviticus and other parts of the Pentateuch that were composed by a priest or priests after 586 BC while they were exiled in Babylon. Subsequently, around approximately 400 BC, a group of redactors, or editors, are said to have merged these four separately composed writings to create the Pentateuch, as it was known during Jesus' lifetime and in contemporary times. In the 12th century AD, a highly influential Jewish rabbi was named Ibn Ezra. Even though he thought the Pentateuch was written by Mosaic people, he became aware of several strange phrasing in a few verses, Genesis 12 verse 6, 
Genesis 22 verse 14, for example. However, he never tried to unravel these mysteries. The renowned Jewish philosopher Baruch, Benedict, Spinoza, 1632-1677, saw what Ibn Ezra had said and said some 500 years later, that Ibn Ezra did not think Moses wrote the Pentateuch. Some objected and cited other Ibn Ezra quotes that defied Spinoza's conclusion. The pantheist Spinoza, who was later banished from the Jewish community and vilified by Christians, contended that Moses did not write the Pentateuch in his Tractatus Theologico-Politicus, 1670. In addition to citing the passages that Ibn Ezra pointed out, Spinoza made a few more succinct claims against Mosaic authorship, all of which were readily refuted by Christian authors in the decades that followed. There are plenty of grounds to disbelieve this cynical criticism of the Bible. First, have a look at what the Bible itself says regarding the Pentateuch's author. Moses is credited with writing the following books in the Pentateuch, Exodus 17 verse 14, 24 verse 4, 34 verse 27, Numbers 33 verse 1 to 2, and Deuteronomy 31 verses 9 to 11. Nowhere in Wellhausen's denial of Mosaic authorship was this biblical evidence addressed. If one chooses to reject the evidence, it is simple to refute Mosaic authorship. However, that isn't true scholarship. The remaining Old Testament passages, including Joshua 1 verse 8, chapter 8 verse 31 to 32, 1 Kings 2 verses 3 and 2 Kings 14 verse 6, chapter 21 verse 8, Ezra 6 verse 18, Nehemiah 13 verse 1, Daniel 9 verses 11 to 13, and Malachi 4 verse 4, provide more testimony. The witness of the New Testament is likewise unambiguous. Matthew 19 verse 8, John 5 verses 45 to 47, 7 verse 19, Acts 3 verse 22, Romans 10 verse 5, and Mark 12 verse 26. The divisions of the Old Testament, the Law of Moses, the first five books of the Old Testament, the prophets, the historical and prophetic books, and the writings, the poetry books of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, were evident in the Jewish mind long before the time of Christ. Jesus' Jewish audience understood well to what he meant when he made reference to the Law of Moses. Thank you for watching.